sex should be inside the marriage to be enjoyed, to procreate, and for longevity. God loaded all sexualities, including the man's mojo, to provide everything with it. No wonder some women use sperm to rub on their face for beauty. Yes, because it's loaded. I will take you through it. We are talking sex and marriage, and one of some of the questions that you are going to ask me, I am going to list them and try to answer them. What is marriage? We have to start from the foundation. Why do we need to marry? What do, what do men want most in marriage? What do women want in marriage? Did God create sex for pleasure? Why is sex important? Why is sex important to the man? And why is sex important to the woman? What are the health benefits of sex? What are the beauty benefits of sex? How do you satisfy your man, meaning your husband? How do you satisfy your wife? What are the put-offs from sex? What destroys a marriage or a relationship? How do you put back the spark in your marriage that has left it? Marriage is the intimate union and equal partnership of a man and a woman. It comes to us from the hand of God who created male and female in his image so that they might become one body and might be fertile and multiply. You know, this multiplication bit is the one everybody holds on to. People believe that they must marry because they want to procreate, they want to have children. Marriage is not about having children alone. It's marriage is for family, marriage is for companionship. Marriage is for joy and for happiness. Man and woman were created with important differences that allow them to give themselves and to receive the other as a gift. We are a gift to each other in marriage. There's no superiority there. Marriage is both a natural institution and a sacred union because it is rooted in divine plan of creation. God did, just, did not just throw man and woman out. He had a purpose of creating man and woman and asking them to come together and cleave together as man and wife. The free concept of the Spouses make a marriage. You know, you don't, there's no forcing of marriage. You agree between yourself to come together to marry. I don't think if I come to my brother here and say, I want to marry you by force, he will not agree. So you must have dual consent to be able to get married. From this consent and from the sexual consummation of marriage, a special bond arises between husband and wife. This bond is lifelong and exclusive. The marriage bond has been established by God and not intended to be dissolved. In this particular area is where the church holds on to and says, when you get married, there is no dissolution. Why? God did not create marriage for divorce. But people have abused that aspect of marriage that they enter into it wrongly and Paradventure is not working, they want to die, they have to separate. If you have a perfect marriage, would you want to do it? No. Permanency, exclusivity, and faithfulness are essential in marriage because they foster and protect the two equal purposes of marriage. These two purposes are growth in mutual love between the spouses and the generation and education of children. Why do we need to marry? One of God's purposes for marriage is to mutually complete one another. That's why he said that they came together and they became one. And to experience companionship is one of the purposes of marriage, like I said earlier. When God created man and then said, it is not good that the man should be alone, I will make him a helper fit for him. Marriage is God's provision to meet our deep longing for a close and intimate relationship. He puts a man and a woman together and uses their respective strengths and weaknesses to make them stronger as a team. Marriage is team work. It's not particularly one man business. It's a team work. Marriage is a school where people learn to put aside their selflessness, commit themselves to 
another person unconditionally and assume responsibility for others. Take note of this because some women enter marriage and believe it's the man alone that is responsible for that marriage. Lie from the pit of hell. Another purpose for marriage is to multiply a godly legacy. The Bible tells us that God blessed man and woman and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. The same Bible tells us that the home is a crucial environment for teaching children the word of God and a modeling lifestyle of love for God and commitment to him. The best place for children to understand concepts like gender roles or conditional love and interdependence is a family where both parents are present and involved. That is why separation and divorce is not good because the children get to bear the brunt of the separation. What do men want most in marriage? I would like to say here that women, God has packed us with a lot. You know, we are called the weaker sex, but in retrospect, we are not the weaker sex. We are not. The way God created the man and the woman, created them to complement themselves. So most of the things I'm going to talk here will veer into like as if it is going to the woman doing and doing and doing always. No. The doing here is to create space for the man to merge with a woman in harmony and make a perfect marriage. So let's go. What do men want most in marriage? Men, the thing that men want most in marriage is sex. Oh yes, it's sex. You might argue that food is more important to a man, or as the popular saying goes, that the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. But if men had to choose between food and sex, Starvation will probably be the number one reason <laughs> why there will be shortage of men because they will choose sex. As they will all choose sex and die of starvation. You'll understand why as I go. <laughs> sex is the driving factor for men. Without constant sex, most men are unable to function. If sex is missing from their lives, then they will do anything to make it happen. Sex is food to man. Do not deprive him of his main meal. Women, that is the main meal of a man. Don't deprive him of it. Men want comfort. Comfort is another important thing to men. Comfort is the main reason why most men stay in relationship. And what do we call comfort? They want peace. They want harmony. They don't want to be disturbed. They don't want to be antagonized. They don't want you nagging them. They need that comfort. Many men want and stay with women that provide them with a safe heaven, a comfortable place, a warm atmosphere in which they can escape the noise and stress from the outside world. The fact that a man can come home from work, sit down in his couch with his lovely wife next to him is something that all men dream about. If a man has a loving wife, he will not spend one minute after closing, he will run home. He will not go to the beer parlor to eat his CEO and uh, He will go home to go and unquabi with his wife. Oh yes. Men love and appreciate their wife's supportive attitude and suiting words. They relish in their wife's want and understanding. Men want companionship. Companionship, this is probably the reason why men eventually decide to marry a woman. Men are looking for a person that is fun to be with. A person that shares their own interests. A person that they can talk to about their dreams, their goals. A person that gets their sense of humor. A person that will stick by them no matter what. If you make yourself available, like I keep telling some women, if you package yourself well and you put all these points together and you are doing it and your husband is, on the is enjoying it, you can put a bottle down and lovingly stroke your husband's neck and tell him to enter the bottle. Because he knows that you love him and you don't want to kill him, you will enter that bottle and you will pop it. That is the strength of the kind of comfort and love that you give the man. It will make him do anything for you. What a woman wants in marriage. You see, we women, we don't want much. Our own is very simple. Very simple. 
There's not even money matter. I will tell you. Women just want to be loved right, respected, adored by their husbands. Who proves his love for them with his actions? There are many common needs that most women hope to fulfill through their marriages. One is friendship. Before the friendship bit, you know, he says the woman wants to be adored. The woman wants to be praised. She wants to be loved. Women like sweet things. You know, even children know this. There's a song in my village those days that children used to sing. It just simplifies and identifies and describes the woman. If you're sweet to a woman, she will do anything. That song those students used to sing, I remember it when I was writing this note. It goes like this. Chewing gum, chewing gum, na la to ma bottle, na baby day and tony. You know what it means? You know what, what it means is ordinary sweet chewing gum. Sweet things and sweet talk will get a woman to sleep with you. Because she believes you love her. By showing that affection. It's not all men that know how to show this affection. Yeah. So little children knew that if you go to Antonio's place, it's all those husband children that Antonio used to catch them with sweet and chewing gum. <laughs> Women want friendship. Women expect their husbands to be a friend. They want the emotional support that comes from the bond of friendship. A good friend to help build confidence that can always be counted on is what we may need. A friend that will be of help to them. Trust. Every good marriage is built on a foundation of trust. Women want their marriages to be free from suspicion and insecurity. They want their husbands to be reliable, dependable, honest, and loyal. They want to trust their husbands and be trusted completely by them. That is why when a man goes out, the woman will be sniffing through his phone, checking his collar to see if there's lipstick. Trust. Especially if the woman, the man has been showing signs of, you know, going color color, the woman will be sleeping. But if she trusts you, she will not even touch your phone or check your clothes. And even if she sees you with the woman, she will wave you and say, Hello dear, I see you. <laughs> Women want to be loved. They want to be loved. Women want demonstration of affection. Unfortunately, Nigerian men, the African men don't know how to show affection. They think Affection is when you, you give money, you buy that. That is not affection. It is not. Women need affection. You know when you say affection, you take your woman, you hold her, you tell her how beautiful she is looking, you stroke her face, you touch her hair. The woman will be melting. After that, bring the cash, she will die. They want to be assured that their husbands enjoy being with them. You know, they crave to hear the words, I love you. I love you. I love you. One million times, say it. You want to accept it. And let me correct something. It's not every woman that knows how to say I love you back. It doesn't mean that she does not love you. It does not mean that she does not love you. There are other ways. There are other ways the woman will say, I love you. Yeah. So many other ways, not by lip service. Some women will tell you, I love you. They are telling you, I love you because they want you to buy something. You know, honey, I love you very much. You know, I saw a car at the Mercedes. You know, I love you. Eh? Can you buy the car for me? That is their kind of, I love you. But a woman that really loves you, you come through the door, the woman wants to know how your day is or how your day went. Are you okay? Is everything okay? If you tell the, the woman that somebody annoyed you, she will rage and be fighting for you right there inside the house. That is love. She doesn't need to tell you I love you. A woman that loves you will not deny you sex. Anytime you tap her and say, honey, do your head like this, she knows. She will wallet love. Good communication. Women love to gist, especially with their husbands, because their husbands are their friends. They want open and honest communication. They want husbands who are good listeners and who show interest in, their, in them by giving them undivided attention. They also want to hear their husbands open up and share their deep, uh, deepest thoughts and feelings. This is 
where we women get it wrong sometimes because men are not talkers. They don't like to talk. They don't talk like like women. So what, that's what women love. So men should strive to give it to them. At least go halfway with them. Providers. Women want their husbands to be good providers. They want hard workers who know how to save money. They don't want workaholics. They want husbands who know how to balance his work ethics with time for his family. Providers. It doesn't mean you have to have money. Like Pastor Tunde said, once a woman knows that you have potential, she will support you. If she's financially able, she will support you to and help you to grow. That's why they say a woman wants potential. They want people that can provide for them. They want you to be their king. They want you to be the head, just like God made provision for it. Shared goals. Women want stable marriages that are based on shared goals. If there is agree ag agreement on important matters such as where to live, whether to have children, and how to raise them, and the importance of religion and family, there will be less opportunity for conflict within marriage. What this is saying is that women want to be carried along. Don't exclude them. They want to be carried along. Admiration and respect. Women want to be admired, respected in their marriages. Husbands should be their wives' mirrors and number one fan. They should lavish praise and show gratitude whenever possible. Yeah. Women want to know that their efforts are valued and appreciated. Unfortunately, Nigerian men don't know how to say Darlene and Holly, you look sweet. They don't know how to do it. We need to send them to school, you know. Yes. Optimism and problem solving. Women want their husband to inspire and comfort them. Op optimistic men who have faith that bad times are bound to improve make great husbands. They don't wallow in self-pity or despair in difficult situations. They are intelligent, positive thinkers who believe they can solve problems. This is what women want. They want to be able to come to you with their problem. Even if you don't have solution, you are able to direct and comfort them. That alone will spur the woman on to be able to solve any imminent problem that is troubling them. Romance and fun. Women don't want men to be perpetual little boys. Like pastor said that men are little boys in the hands of women. Yes, they can be little boys in the bedroom. But outside they should be macho men with broad shoulders that can carry the women's problem. Yes, women want to have fun. They want to have fun with their husbands. You should be able to play. Why is play non-existent in the marriage? Why is everything so stereotyped, husband and wife? If you see husband and wife in a car, you will understand what happens in their houses. They can't even just in their car. The woman is like this. The man is like this. What is that? This, you should be able to play. You should be able to put your hands behind your husband when he's driving. Stroke his pants. Talk to him. That's what you are there for. Women want commitment. Married women want to feel secure in the relationship. They want to know their husbands don't regret choosing them as a life partner. Women want to feel their husbands and see their husbands' commitment to them. If you, you saw an example just now. Pastor was talking about his wife. Did you see his eyes? He, said he was excited talking about her. I wish she was here to, to hear all he was saying. That's how a husband to appreciate his wife because he's a part of him. But African men mm, did not create sex for pleasure. In this area, this area of the world, we believe sex is sin. In some areas, they think it's taboo. That all the man has to do is woman, open your legs, and the man goes one back and gets off and off. That's not what we created sex for. And that is why there's frustration in marriage. So many marriages are suffering, not for anything, but frustration. And you know, when a man is sexed out, he becomes a bulldog. You ask him A, he will charge. You ask him B, he will unnecessarily charge. It's not just the man, the woman too. A woman that has not had an orgasm in her life doesn't know the pleasure of sex. So anytime you come to her, she will kick you. But if you have sought her, her network, and known the password, and you go in there, and she's shouting hallelujah, and it's See me after this talk. I will tell you what to do.
you are you the man if you don't know how to press your wife's buttons come and ask me i'll tell you because we must get this thing right we must have joy and happiness in our families so that we can send forth our children outside and stop all this madness outside it is a lot of sex that is passing all this a man and a woman that has no sex will leave the house and go outside and they're happy there will be no fight. The man will get to the office, he will not be abusing his secretary. He will, he will not say to him, good morning, sir. I will say, what is so good about this money? <laughs> do that. Because his wife has given him correct service. He will work with children on work, get to the office and deliver. Okay. The married children is the only way man and woman can truly enjoy the riches God has planned for them because the relationship is specifically designed to illustrate God's unending love for his people. Husband and wife are the only creatures capable of gaining spiritual unity and a deeper knowledge of each other through the sexual relationship. Do you know that a marriage without sex is no marriage? Do you know that? God made provision for sex because he has packed the man's sperm with a lot of things, even spiritually, to offload on the woman. The one that the man doesn't have, the woman is carrying it and they connect pipe and, and rain. Once they connect, the flow goes to the left and goes to the right. That is why God created it. Has anybody seen the drawing of the anatomy of a human being? You know how scientifically they do it with it. If you see all the nerves there, they are all linked from here to under your feet. And the only bus stop they have is in the mangrove forest. You know where that is? The main McCoy. A love of sexual relations is, is one of the benefits of marriage. God approves of sexual relationship between married partners and views married sexual relationship as beautiful. Why they say that sex is made for marriage is so that you will benefit from what God has put together for sex. Sex is not just sex. It has spiritual benefits and physical benefits. We'll get to that. The final verse in Genesis, I have to quote some Bible verses here, is a summary statement of how God views his creation. He says, Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. What was he talking about? This was shortly after God had created the first two human beings as male and female. God was talking about sexuality. Probably he brought Adam and brought Eve and they connected and did the deed. And God looked at it and said, oh, my children. And says, this is good because there was a union. There was companionship. There was harmonious music being played according to God's plan. You see, God is a master planner. God was talking about sexuality the male and female bodies and sexual relationship as good in the account of creation. The only thing God said was not good was for the man to be alone. So the man cannot be alone. Likewise, the woman cannot be alone. So God created a woman to be with him so they can bond and commune together physically and spiritually. Genesis 2, 24-25 also said, Therefore, a woman shall flee, leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. If you don't marry, who will you go and hold? The dinner You must hold a wife home. <laughs> and the man and his woman were both naked and were not ashamed. Why is it that in marriage, women still fire a up and down when they want to go to the bathroom? You are supposed to be walking around naked and not be ashamed of your husband. You should not be ashamed of exposing that thing that the man saw and said, Ah, I love this woman. But what we get is woman hiding. Rapa here. Everything they are hiding. If you ask a woman now, what, is, what does your husband's penis look like? She's had three children or four. They cannot answer you. I would have thrown this question to pastor's wife, but I will hold my peace. <laughs> God gave the man a sexual pipe while he gave the woman a ring like a hole that the pipe can fit into in harmony when they come together. Why do you think God created it like that? Why did he give a woman pipe and a man pipe? But he created a passage for the pipe to enter so that there will be an 
outflow into the inside of the woman, they can harmoniously cling together. That is why it was greeted like that. This is why this instruction was given to a young man. And I'm equally giving it to the men here today. Let the men here say, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now I say to you men, drink water from your own well. Your well is your wife's well. Share your love with your wife. Why spill water of your springs in public? That means why throw away your juices outside instead of putting it in the right place? You should reserve it for yourselves. Don't share it with strangers. Let your wife be a fountain of blessing for you. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. Let her breast satisfy you always. You will always be captivated by her love. That's what I say to you, men. So if you are not married here like one of my brothers that I'm looking, please hurry up and go and grab a woman so you will have a well to drink from. Amen. It is in the context that the Bible verse of Proverbs 18 says, He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Why did the Lord say obtain favor from the Lord? Can anybody please answer me that question? Why did God have to add that part that when you find a wife, you find a good thing? Women are favor carriers. Thank you. <laughs> because the woman has been packed with a lot of blessing. If a man that loves his wife, because if you want to get the best out of a woman, love her, your wife will always pray for you. You will never have a bad day when you go out when your wife prays for you. You are outside striving to feed the family. Your wife is inside. God bless my husband. God protect my husband. Those are part of the things that the woman is carrying inside her. If your wife hates you, nothing good will ever come out of you. You will not make money. You will go out and be parabolating up and down. You must have that positive love and that positive affection from your wife for things to go well. In fact, a man that is having difficulty, that has a good wife, can kneel before the wife and ask the wife, bless me. Let me give, tell you what I used to tell some women that I counsel, and to the glory of God, one of them, things are what this thing is, is working for her. Her life has turned around. What is this? I told her, I said, listen, you're having problems with your husband. Her husband had gone amok. He's gone into the streets. He started going after other women. He doesn't touch her. He doesn't. So I told her what to do. But I told her one thing. If your husband is sleeping with you, instead of sitting down there and just enjoying our money, pray. Pray and ask God to make your husband what you want your husband to be while he's making love to you. My sisters, it works. You are cooking for your husband. Pray well-being into your food. You don't need to go to any babalawo. You are the babalawo. Yes. You don't need that. God has put a lot into the woman. It's just that the woman does not know how to utilize it. If a woman knows how to utilize it, she will not be wicked towards her husband because everything she wants, she will get. Everything. The man will do it. I don't want to use the word. If you love your wife or your husband enough, you can put a neck, a, a rope to his neck and he will be following you. If they ask him, oh boy, which one? This one I don't put something to say, leave her, my lover. He's going, he's going like this. Leave her, now my wife, I love her. It's just that love and affection. He doesn't go beyond that. God's created sex in marriage. He created both for the purpose of love. When marriage happens, sex and love becomes a blessing that God intended them to be. In Corinthians 7, 3-5, it says that the husband and the wife are actually defrauding themselves when they refuse to give physical pleasure and satisfaction to each other. Why? There's something spiritual about a man sleeping with his wife. That's why the Bible is reiterating this. You guys need to go back to the Bible. The only activity that is to break regular sexual relationship is prayer and fasting. And even that is by mutual agreement and for specific cause. So men, don't go tell your wife that you are, you, are, you are fasting. Pastors especially, you say, I'm doing holy fasting. You must tell her what you are fasting for and why you are fasting. So, please, have sex anytime, anywhere, 
in your home. Women, yes, have sex anywhere in your home, in the kitchen, anywhere. I gave an advice to a man, and he went and practiced this. His wife was busy working in the kitchen. The man went and held her from the back. And it happened there, and only God knows what he did. From that day, the man never complains to me that the woman used to elbow him every time.